Hello and welcome to another jog vlog session. This one is going to be focusing on some geographical skills which will help see you through um, some examination technique um, when it comes to actually sitting your assessments. So we're going to be looking at OS maps um, and we're going to do it in the context of coastal landscapes which is obviously this topic. So what I'm going to show you um, to begin with is a couple of photos which tie in last lesson. So we were looking at things like offshore reefs or breakwaters um, with the um, location being sea pooling and I showed you the image on the left of the screen um, to you last lesson. Um, and we learned about the advantages and disadvantages of offshore reefs and, and all the benefits they bring for the land behind. Um, but what is useful is that you can actually see this not just represented by photographs and aerial photos which are brilliant and wonderfully clear but you can actually see kind of before and after when it comes to OS maps too. So this is an ordnance survey map of sea pooling before the offshore breakwaters were built um, and they are actually they do appear on an OS map um, and this tells you that this area of coast at least must have been something that, uh, that was prone to longshore drift because these little lines here are groins and those groins indicate that enough money obviously was needed to prevent the sediment from being moved either downstream to the south uh, or southeast or, or further northwest depending on the direction it would change depending on the conditions. Um, and further down also you can see that the beach is quite narrow this little strip of yellow is quite narrow and although there are dunes behind the settlements in sea pooling at the time um, uh, won't be very protected. And you know, there's industry, there's a pub there, and there's campsites, caravan sites, etc. Now, if we scroll on to the next one, which is a modern map of uh, sea pooling with sea pooling down here, very similar. Now, not only can you see that it's a slightly clearer map because it's newer, but also you've got the very obvious offshore breakwaters um, visible in the map on the map too. Um, and you can see the width of the beach has increased significantly. You can also make out the old groins um, and where the old groins were. Now you can't actually see those groins currently um, because they are, um, actually I don't know where they are, they might be underneath the sand, they probably would have removed them or you'd hope they would have removed them a little bit. Um, but effectively they're not there anymore because they're not needed because the breakwaters are doing a far, far good enough job um, to actually help. And there you've got your dunes again listed and labelled here and here which also kind of protect the land behind it. So sea pooling is an incredibly well protected area um, and this OS map provides evidence of that. But providing evidence on OS maps is, is one thing but being able to quote OS maps for their evidence is another thing and that's a skill you need to develop in geography. So the task you've got and this, this is saved on 365 this handout um, and um, it's also um, from the um, Highland Cow book um, in the coast section so this is just me taking that directly from there so there the credit goes to the the publishers of that Pearson um, and it provides you with a bit of information and I would absolutely tell you to read this information before you attempt the activities on these two pages um, the information tells you how to read grid, re grid references and how to measure scale uh, and, and uh, one hint that it doesn't give you but I will give you is that any square on an OS map, if you're not sure about what scale it is, you know, this 1 to 50,000 thing, or you don't want to understand the whole 1 to 50,000 to 1 to 25,000 scale, a really good rule of thumb is one box means one square kilometre. And that is always the case. So if the box is bigger, and let's go back to this map here, okay, this box here that does this, that is one square kilometre. But it's a more zoomed in map than this one because these squares are, are smaller they look smaller but they're actually the same size it's just zoomed out a bit so again the rule of thumb is one box in an OS map is one square kilometer if you know that then you want to try and measure distance or scale and you you know you don't know how to read scales or it doesn't provide you one it should but it should do but there you go um, you just have to measure one side of the box because if it's one square kilometer it means that's one kilometer and that's one kilometer so if you know the distance here is like I know, three centimeters four centimeters whatever it might be then you know that that three centimeters is one kilometer so if you know that the distance between here and here is I don't know eight centimeters then you know it's 2.3 kilometers or 2.6 kilometers sorry so 
that's just the tip I will give you that the book doesn't give you. OK, so oh, actually it does give you that. Look, whatever the scale of the OS map, a grid square is always one kilometer by one kilometer. There we go. I don't know what I'm talking about. So do this activity. Um, and once you've done that and answered the questions on the two pages that um, this map applies or just from the handout that's saved on 365, uh, which is off both of them. Once you've done that, then you will have practiced some key map skills in terms of grid references and scale and distance. OK, um, and that is the session. So that one is, is a nice, easy one for you to do. Uh, it's not a long video, uh, but investing time in doing the geographical skills means you are going to pick up those extra little marks, which a lot of people will be a bit confuddled by and maybe not do. OK, so it's really, really important stuff. Please make sure you do it. All right. Thank you for listening. Next session is actually the final session of the coasts part before we then move on to rivers, which is the last topic um, a last section of this topic. Okay. All right. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.